So in this session, we will have a quick uh, revision of uh, geography uh, through the MCQs. So we will take some MCQs and we will also explain those things. Uh, mostly these topics are untouched by UPSC in the last uh, five to six years. Uh, earlier, there were a lot of questions, but in the recent times, they were untouched. So we can expect the untouched areas. So we'll see in a quick manner. Uh, so while the video, you can pause and you can answer the question and then you can, uh, you know, see the explanation. You can check whether you have answered it as correct. Okay. Yes, so this is a quick revision session for geography, uh, CSP 2024. Let's take the question. First one, which of the following statements about the interior of earth is incorrect? So they are asking about the uh, incorrect statement about the earth's interior. The first statement says, the first option, the crust is the outermost solid, solid part of earth. First statement. Second statement, lithosphere is a region which is responsible for the most of earthquakes and volcanoes on earth. And the third statement is Gutenberg discontinuity refers to the transition zone between mantle and core. This is the third statement. Uh, third option. Fourth option, iron is the most abundant element in the interior of earth followed by oxygen. So out of these four, which one are incorrect they are saying, right? First statement, option A, the crust is the outermost solid part of earth, a very basic thing. So everyone might be knowing about this, right? The second uh, statement, lithosphere is the region which is responsible for the most of earthquakes and volcanoes on earth. Uh, no, this is the wrong one. So because asthenosphere is the one which is responsible for the most of earthquakes and volcanoes because it is the fluid or uh, viscous layer within mantle where the it enables the plates to move on the magma to come out, out out of the vents right so second statement is wrong let's check uh, the other statements as well gutenberg discontinuity refers to transition zone between the mantle and core yes so we have a different transition zones uh, based on the earthquake waves uh, passage uh, between different layers after studying the earthquake uh, waves they came to know that there are different discontinues so we will see those things as well iron is the most abundant element in the interior of earth followed by oxygen yes so this is also correct so briefly the answer is b here let's uh, quickly revise about the interior of earth so these are the layers of uh, earth's interior so you can see here the core this one is a core part and then uh, the you know outer uh, core then outer mantle sorry inner mantle and then outer mantle and then crust so these are the layers of earth now if you see the uh, what you call if you cut the earth interior and if you see these facts so the top layer is crust 0 to 100 kilometers approximately is the crust and the next one is about the mantle complete mantle until 2900 kilometers from 100 kilometers right so uh, sorry from top till 2,900 kilometers after 100 kilometers. So this is the mantle and this is the inner mantle. This is the outer mantle and within outer mantle, we have asthenosphere, which is fluid viscous in nature, which enables the movement of, uh, uh, you know, a lot of things, uh, magnetic currents, as well as uh, movement of plates, uh, different plates over the earth's surface and then leading to the earthquakes, volcanoes. So, asthenosphere is the one which is responsible. And lithosphere here you can see. So, lithosphere is the one which is consists of crust as well as uppermost solid mantle, right? Beyond, I mean, above the asthenosphere. So, that is called as a lithosphere which enables the nutrient movements and all. Then comes the core part that is outer core as well as inner core. So, outer core is from top. It is around... 5100 uh, kilometers and this is liquid in nature so this is liquid in nature uh, and the next inner core is about the solid until 6378 kilometers the liquid uh, the i mean the outer core is liquid because there is no enough pressure to make it uh, you know a solidified form so that's why it is in a, a liquid format right next one about the discontinuities we have seen after the uh, passage of earthquake waves, after studying the earthquake waves, the scientists came to know that there are certain transition zones. And whoever has invented this or discovered this, uh, the name was given according to their name, right? 
So Conrad discontinuity between the upper and the lower crust. So within crust, we have upper crust as well as lower crust, which is actually boundary of ocean crust as well as uh, uh, what you call uh, continental crust. So Conrad discontinuity is the topmost one. Then Mohorovic discontinuity, which is between lower crust, that is the uh, crust and mantle. So the uh, boundary between crust and mantle is Mohorovic. And then repeti discontinuity, that is between uh, the mantle itself, like upper and lower mantle. Upper and lower mantle, there is a discontinuity. That is called as repeti discontinuity. Then Gutenberg discontinuity, this is between the mantle and the core, right? So outer core and mantle. So that is called as Gutenberg discontinuity. And then Lehman discontinuity is between inner core and outer core. So this may be as in the matching or like uh, any form. So you have to remember. About the composition of earth earth composition in the interior, right? So the topmost one is iron with 34.6% followed by oxygen with 29.5% and silicon with 15.2%. Uh, so top three you have to remember that will be sufficient. Next question, Indian plate is not bordered with which of the following plate plates, right? So there are a lot of plates uh, which enables the movement of, uh, uh, you know, the earth uh, a surface and then leading to the earthquakes and all. There are different plates, major plates as well as minor plates. So they are asking which one is not bound border with the Indian plate. Eurasian plate, Eurasian plate, Arabian plate, Australian plate and Philippines plate. So among this, which one is not boundary? So Eurasian plate is the very basic thing you can eliminate where Himalayas have formed after Indian plate collided with the Eurasian plate. That means it has a boundary. Fine. This can be eliminated. Then Arabian plate. Yes, India do have, Indian subcontinent do have border with the Arabian plate, right? So because Pakistan was also once part of India, that can be taken as a clue. And yes, Arabian plate is also boundary. So you may be in doubt with the Australian plate and Philippines plate. So if you look into here, this is the boundary between the Australian plate and Indian plate. And Philippines plate is uh, divided from Indian plate through Eurasian plate. So the answer is Philippines plate D. D is the answer. Next question. After ice caps, which of the following source has the largest percentage of fresh water? So we have a fresh water, the 71% of Earth's uh, composition the, is nothing but water, oceans, right? Mm, out of that, after ice caps, okay, they are talking about the fresh water. So after ice caps, which one is having the largest composition? Groundwater, rivers, lakes, atmosphere. So this is the option. So out of this, we have highest with ice caps, but they have asked apart from. After that, we have groundwater. Groundwater is having the uh, largest freshwater after ice, ice caps, then followed by lakes and then ground uh, atmosphere and then finally river. So you can check here. This is directly of NCRT. Oceans having the 97.3% of water followed by ice caps 2% and then groundwater 0.68. Then comes the lakes, uh, freshwater lakes. Then comes the inland and salt lakes, then atmosphere and rivers. So the answer is groundwater A. Next one about the ocean currents, consider the following ocean currents. So Brazilian current, Guinea current, Agulas current, Falkland current. So they have given four currents and they are asking which one of the above is our warm current. So warm currents are those currents which move from equator towards the polar region, right? So water currents are the water masses which have uniformed character and they move uh, from polar to equator or equator, equator to polar to manage the temperature distribution across the water, right? So out of this, uh, which one is the warm currents they are asking? Uh, Brazilian current, one and three. Brazilian current and Agulhas current, two, three, four. Uh, so Brazil current is a warm current. So here they have eliminated. So B can be eliminated. Then uh, Queenie current, Agula, Queenie current is also warm current. Agulhas current is also warm current. And Falkland current is the cold current. So fourth option can be eliminated and you have, okay, answer C, right? So you can see here in the first, we'll take up the Pacific Ocean, the Northern Pacific Ocean, you can see North Equatorial and then Kuroshio, 
then north pacific uh, current then alaska current which is a cold current now right because it is turning towards the equator from polar and then kamchatka california so in the north pacific ocean we have kamchatka alaska and california as a cold currents right and in the southern hemisphere southern equatorial current is a warm current east australian current and then yeah we have antarctic uh, current which is the largest of water current this is a cold and this part moving towards the equator is called as peru current so we have only peru current as a cold current in the south south pacific ocean now moving to the atlantic ocean you can see again north equatorial north equatorial is everywhere because it is where the currents are generated from the equator right north equatorial current then gulf stream north atlantic current norwegian current as well so you may think norwegian current is a cold current but no it actually is a moving from equator to the polar region so that's why it is a warm current green greenland current moving towards the equator from poles labrador current and canary current which is a part of north atlantic moving towards the equator so here we have three again in the north atlantic ocean we have three uh, cold currents that is labrador green uh, greenland and then canary current right so rest of rest of the things are warm currents in the south atlantic ocean we have equator south equatorial current and then guinea current guinea current is a warm current so this is what asked in the question which moves to, towards like uh, in the guinea region of africa then comes the brazil current again warm current and that this one which is uh, Ant antarctic after hitting the land it will be uh, take a separate branch which is a falkland current this is a cold current right and then this brazil current rotates takes turn and then moves towards the african uh, continent that is bengula current this is also cold current right so this is a cold current next in the indian ocean we have north equatorial and then south equatorial which is warm agulas current moving towards between the madagascar right uh, and with the Africa, so it is the Agulas current, which is a warm current. Fine. The rest of all we have seen. Fine. This is all very important. Yes. Here, West Australian current is a cold current in the Indian Ocean. Fine. So this is about the currents. Next one. Consider the following statements about earthquake waves. About the earthquake waves, they are asking. P waves are body waves, whereas S waves are surface waves. So, first statement. Then, P waves can travel through solids and liquids, whereas S waves cannot travel through liquids, they are saying. Third one, P waves can cause destruction of earth, whereas S waves destruct, destruction is almost negligible. So, these are the three statements. First statement, P waves and S waves, both are body waves. It is not surface waves. But primary, P waves means primary, S waves means secondary. So, P waves after emerging, after uh, some time, S waves will emerge. So, both are body waves. So, you can eliminate one option. First statement, so two options can be eliminated, A and D. So, you are left with two, two, two and three. P waves can travel through solids and liquids and S waves cannot travel through liquids. Correct. All right, so you can see here, this is the S wave, which vertically, so there is a vertical movement as well. That's why there is a destruction. You can see here as well. So this is a body waves, primary waves and secondary waves within. And after hitting the surface, there will be low waves and relay waves, which are surface waves, right? P waves move this direction, S waves vertically. Vertically moves as well. So, second statement is correct. They cannot travel through liquids, S waves. And third statement is P waves can cause destruction of earth, whereas S waves destruction is almost negligible. This is also wrong because S waves are the ones which are vertically moving and have a more destruction, right? So, that's why the answer is two only. C. Right. Next one, about atmosphere, they have asked in the question, meteoroids entering the atmosphere from outer space burns into which of the following layers of atmosphere? Meteoroids entering the atmosphere from outer space burns in which 
layers of atmosphere exosphere stratosphere mesosphere troposphere anyone yes so exosphere stratosphere mesosphere and troposphere so meteoroids are the hot ones right so that means to make them uh, disappear to make them observe the temperatures of that particular layer should be very cold if it is warmer so it usually supports the meteoroids to enter more to gain the heat but if the temperature is very extremely low and meteoroids which are having extremely high so it will be balanced stratosphere and then exosphere can be eliminated because temperatures are higher because of presence of ozone as well as presence of ions in exosphere these two actually has highest uh, temperature so it will not destruct meteoroids rather it could have supported them right so a and b is eliminated troposphere also when compared to mesosphere the temperatures are a little bit lower mesosphere we have minus degrees like minus 50 minus 60 so there the meteoroids will the heat will be destructed and it will become you know, normalized right so the answer is mesosphere c you can see here the atmosphere layers first we have troposphere up to 10 kilometers 10 to 18 kilometers right in the equator we have a higher uh, heights and compared to the poles because there is a higher temperature then we have a tropopause where the flights usually uh, airlines fly and then we have a stratosphere there is an increase in temperature because of presence of ozone then we have a stratopause after that again it reduces the temperature in mesosphere because there is no reason for that to increase the temperature then mesopause and thermosphere it is again increases heat because there is a ions that's why the temperature is uh, higher right so that is about the atmosphere next one about with reference to indian ocean dipole so this is the previous question actually this is a previous question with reference to indian ocean dipole sometimes mentioned in news while forecasting the indian monsoon which of the following statements is are correct so indian ocean dipole phenomena is character characterized by the difference in sea surface temperature between tropical western indian ocean and tropical eastern pacific ocean they are saying first statement an iod phenomena can influence an el nino impact on the monsoon So out of this, which one are correct, they are asking. Let's see what actually is Indian Ocean Dipole, then we will come to the discussion. Indian Ocean Dipole means the temperatures, the impact because of the variation of temperatures between the Western Indian Ocean and the Eastern Indian Ocean. It is not related to the Pacific Ocean, rather within Indian Ocean. Fine. So if there is an excess temperature than normal in the Western Indian Ocean, we have more rainfall because of low pressure zone. This will hit the Indian coast and then there will be more rainfall. In this colder region, of course, this is a high pressure zone. So the winds will travel towards this. And in case of negative ocean dipole, the temperatures in the eastern Indian Ocean will be higher. And the western Indian Ocean, the temperatures will be lower. So the low pressure zone is here. The winds from here will rush us to here. So Indonesia, Australia, these get more rainfall and Indian, uh, you know, mainland will see the negative impact. That means lesser rainfalls, right? So this is about Indian Ocean Dipole. Now Indian Ocean Dipole is characterized by differences in sea surface temperature between the tropical western Indian Ocean and tropical uh, eastern Pacific Ocean they are seeing. So this can be eliminated. This is within Indian Ocean. So first statement is eliminated. One only and both one and two. Next, an IOD phenomena can influence an El Nino impact on the monsoon. Yes, if that is a positive one, that means even if there is an El Nino, there will be a, a little bit rainfall. If there is an El Nino and then there is a negative IOD, that means India will see a lot of drought. So second statement is correct. So answer B only. Right? So these are few questions from physical geography. In the next session, we will see the Indian geography, right? Thank you.